Alright, so in this video we're just continuing on where we left off in the notes where we're doing the working backwards. Um, so you've already seen a little bit of this before, it's just a little bit matter of just practicing a few more for those that may be needed to see a few more examples. Um, so we're going to have y being our exam 1 scores. Uh, remember again, this means that the exam scores are distributed normally. The mean is 73. The standard deviation is 11. So we have our mean is 73. Our standard deviation is 11. We want to find the exam 1 score of students that cuts off the 97th percentile. Alright, so this is the 4. We're going to start with our picture. So the mean is 73. Subtracting off my 11 each time that I go to the left. Adding 11 each time I go to the right. And now we want to find the 97th percentile. So our goal is to find this value at the bottom. That gives me 97% to the left of it. Now how do I know it really falls just a little bit below 95? And some of you might not know exactly where to put that on the picture, and it's not going to hurt you to not know how to put it on the picture, but it can definitely help us understand if we know why it goes on there. So I know that if I went out two standard deviations in either direction of the mean, that I get 95% in the middle. So I get 2.5% on either side. So what I know is that this 95 is actually the 97 and a half percentile because there's 97.5 percent, 95 percent plus two and a half percent to the left of it. Now if you're not really sure where it's going to fall, all you need to do is worry about putting the mean on there of the 73 and putting this number on here. So let me go ahead and draw that so you can see what I mean. So if you're unsure about where that's going to fall and you don't want that there to confuse you. I would at least know that 73 is the 50th percentile because half of the data falls below it. So since we're looking at 97% near the left, I at least know that it has to be higher than 73. So you can just use this picture instead if you're not really sure where it falls on those increments. Right, but either way that we do it, this is when we go to the table trying to look for a certain number. We want everything to the left of our question mark. That's our 0 0.97. So we're going to go to our table working backwards trying to find that. So we're going to be working on the inside. Just as a quick reminder here. Right, so we know our answer is going to be bigger than 73 which means that since I'm above the mean, my z is going to be a positive number. So I know I'm going to be on the positive side of my z chart here. And I'm trying to find 0.97 in the middle of the table. So again, I go down this first column to look for my jump. So somewhere between 0.9641 and 0.9713 is my 0.97. So I go over in these two rows, find the closest thing that I can. Here's our 0.9699. And then once I have that number, I can get my Z. So now my Z is actually going to be positive 1.88. So I'm just looking at which row it's in and what column it is in and putting those two numbers together to get me my Z. closest thing to 0 0.9700 in the table. So I have my z. Once I know that, I'm just going to use our new formula we learned. My goal here is actually to find the value of y. So now I have my value of z. I have my standard deviation. And I have my mean. Then we just got to do the math here. 
and we get 93.68. Or what that means for us is 97% of our STAT 205 students score less than our 93.68 points on exam one. Or I can also know then from that that 3% of students score higher than 93.68 points on exam one. I choose the 97% because that's what it asked for in the problem. All right, so another example. This time looking at house prices. We are given our mean, but we're given our standard deviation. So again, I'm going to start with my picture. So I start at my mean. 156,000. A little illegible there. Let me fix that. Subtract off my 23,600 each time I go to the left here. and adding it every time I go to the right. All right, and we want to find the top 1% of house prices. So we're trying to find this number for this is 1%. Now, let's go first our picture. Now when I decide to go to the table to figure out what I'm looking for, this is where again it's important to remember that we're looking for everything to the left of the question marks. That's the way our table reads. So if there's 1% to the right of that number, there's 99% to the left of that number. So I'm actually going to be going to the table looking for 0 0.9900. And again, I at least know that my answer should be bigger than the mean. Alright, so it's going to be a positive z-score that I'm looking for. And again, you can draw a picture similar to this for this one that we have down here. I'm going to the table looking for 0 0.9900. So again, I go down that first column looking for my jump. So somewhere between these two numbers is my 0.9900 closest thing I find here is this point 0.9901. Now remember, that's a number that's on in the inside of the table, so that's a probability, not a z-score. So once I have that number, I figure out what row I'm in, so 2.3, which column I'm in, 0 0.03, and I put those two numbers together to get myself a z of 2.33, so 2.33 is where that number is going to come from. So I have my z. So now I just got to plug everything into my equation I already have up here. And of course, different setup, so I have a different mean and different standard deviation from above as well. So we take our z that we just found, times our standard deviation of that 23,600, and add the mean of 156,000 to it, and we get our $210,988. So then interpreting this, we can say that 1% of houses in this town have a value of $210,000, $988, sorry, or more. So the or more tells me or higher, that right shaded area that I have. So if this was your budget for the house, 
that you're looking for, about $211,000. This would be a good area for you to look because only about 1% of the houses would be out of your price range. So that'd be something that'd be good to know before you started looking in that town at houses. One more example of this. This time we're going to find the middle 80% of house values. So my picture is going to start the same. So I have that same mean and that same standard deviation. So let me just add those numbers to the picture. Okay, so we have those. Now we want to find the middle 80% of house values. Now okay, this one should be able, all should be able to draw the picture for. Because we know if we got one standard deviation in either way of the mean, that's where 68% is. If I go out two standard deviations, that's 95%. So 80% is between those two numbers. So I also know that my answers are then going to be between those two numbers as well. So we want that to be 80%. Now again, I'm also going to go ahead and complete my picture. So I have 20% left over, two different places to put it in. So we're going to split that 20% up, so 10% then on either side. So this time I'm trying to find two values. I'm just going to go ahead and mark them. So we're going to call this question mark A and question mark B so we can go through them both. So let's go ahead and find A first. If I look at this one, I'm going to look at how much is the left of this question mark. So I actually just have this 10% to the left of that question mark. So when I go to the table, I'm going to be looking for 0 0.1000. Again, I can tell my answer should be negative for this one because I'm below the mean. So then I also know on my table I'm going to be on the negative side. I'm going to go down that first column until I see my jump. So somewhere between 0 0.0968 and 0 0.1151 is our 10%. Come up on the closest thing we can, which is 0 0.1003. And then from there, again, remember, find our row and column that number is in. So we're going to get negative 1.28. Alright, so now that we have that number, we can go ahead and find our answer for A. So here our Y is going to be Z times our standard deviation plus our mean. And we get 125000 $792, which as we can see is between our $108,000 and our $132,000 from our picture. Now to find B. So for this one again, I want everything to the left of that question mark, so I need the 80% plus that 10%. So I need to add those two numbers together, so I'm actually going to be looking for 90%, so 0 0.9000. And I shouldn't actually be too surprised on what number I'm going to get here. Okay, so the closest thing we find, check in our row, there's our jump. Closest thing we got is this 0 0.8997. If I work out to my row and column, I get a positive 1.2. And what I was meaning when I said it shouldn't be surprising what we get, right, I got the negative 1.28 on this side because I had 10% to the left. And I get the positive 1.28 here because I have the idea of 10% on the right and it's symmetric. So I'm going out the same number of standard deviations just in the opposite direction. So this is like two standard deviations away in either direction. Here I have to go out 1.28 standard deviations in either direction. So the only thing that's changing here is what I'm plugging in for my Z. But the standard deviation is still the same. The mean is still the same. At this time we get $186,200.
which is again between our 179 and 203 that I would expect. So then I can say that 80% of houses in this town have a value between are $125,792 and are $186,200. That's a little bit more practice with working backwards. In your next video, you're going to take all the things that we've learned in this normals idea notes and work a big problem sort of trying to figure out when to use which type of formula.